In this video, we're going to be creating a simple 2D camera for use in our games. As some project setup, the first thing I'm going to do is delete everything from our canvas. Everything that can be, with the exception being this lighting folder, will be deleted. Perfect. Now to set up the basis of this tutorial, we are going to add four things to the world. One camera and three cubes. Starting with the camera, we're going to quickly add to the project a camera, and it's going to be the camera actor. We can see as long as our camera is selected, there is going to be a preview of what our camera is seeing, and we can see that this is currently in 3D space. What we're going to do to make our life easier for lining up everything else that we're going to add is we are going to go into our transform, and we are going to reset the transform of the location to go towards origin by hitting this little arrow. Now, obviously, the camera has left our view. If you ever want to just go to what you've selected in Unreal, you can just hit the F key and it's going to bring you there and then you can zoom in and around as you need to. With our camera at origin, we are now going to add our three blocks. So you can quickly add a shape cube. Now with our cube added, I'm going to duplicate it twice by hitting Control D. You can see here in the outliner that we now have three cubes. Let's adjust these cubes so that they're ready for the experiment. One of the cubes is going to go to the right, one of the cubes is going to go to the left, and one of the cubes is going to be in the middle. The leftmost cube is going to fall backwards, the rightmost cube is going to come forwards. This is for the demonstration that's coming shortly. Now let's focus on our camera and set this up in 2D space. First, I'm going to move my camera back so that all three of my cubes are in view. Now the rest of this is going to take place in our camera's settings. If we look over here, we can see a few different camera settings that I want to highlight. We've already talked about the transform and how that corresponds to the position in the world. But to change between third dimension and two dimensions, we are going to change our projection mode from perspective to orthographic. When we click this, you can see a few things happen. First, our preview becomes this really weird and disgusting wireframe. We'll talk about that. But before we talk about that, we need to talk about our ortho width and our clip plane. The width is how much you see. You can see that it pretty much acts as a zoom. Look at the effect me zooming in and out has on our preview. Now, the near clip plane and the far clip plane are a representation of what is in scope of our camera. Simply put, the clip plane is going to dictate what, from the source being the camera itself, in world units, is going to be shown on the camera. I'm going to demonstrate to you now what this actually means in practice. So you can see in our preview here that we have our three blocks on our preview of our camera. If I adjust our near clip plane, I'm going to be telling it that from our origin, I want to see less. So as we get close here, at about 350, we can start seeing the rightmost brick or our closest brick start to fade away. And what you will notice is it's all fading away in world order. So the closest part of our first cube is the closest thing to us, so it is going to clip out first. Then it's the front of the middle cube. Then it's the back of the first cube, and you can see as I continue to expand on this that that is what's taking place. Now, for the purposes of this project, we can keep this at zero. I just wanted to demonstrate in real time what these clip planes are actually responsible for doing. Now, next we can talk about the aspect ratio, which might be a little familiar for you. If I change my aspect ratio, you can see it directly impacts the size of the preview or the size of the actual canvas and viewport that we're going to be working with. There are a lot of predetermined aspect ratios that we can use, such as a standard 1920 by 1080. If I do that, you can see that is what the default was that we were working previously before. So that's good. When we hit play here, you're going to notice that a player spawns and then dies, and we don't actually use our camera. What gives? Well, we have to tell the world that we want to use this camera. Since this is going to be a simple game with just one player who's going to be using this fixed camera, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to auto-activate this camera for player zero, or the first player that spawns in. Now, when I hit play, we are fixed on our camera and we have this nice 2D vision here. So now you can see that when I hit play, the 2D view that we got from hitting play is different from this annoying wireframe that we were talking about before. How do we tell what our camera is actually seeing? Now, there is no great way to do this, not in the current version anyway, but I'm gonna show you my workaround. If we navigate to this little grid in the top right-hand corner of our viewport and click it, it's going to bring out four different views. Now, here you can see we have a perspective view, a top view, a right view, and a back view. 
we are going to change one of these views to be our camera's view. So if I click on top here, and then change this to be my camera actor, we are now going to have a wireframe view from the perspective of my camera actor. But we don't want a wireframe, that's the exact thing we're trying to avoid here. So I'm gonna change wireframe to lit. And now this is going to be a grid-based view of what we're actually seeing out of our camera. Now what is annoying is if we did maximize this view, we are fixed to the perspective of the camera actor. We don't want to be fixed to that perspective, so we're going to use both of these views in tandem to set up our world. The best way to do that and to give yourself more space is to just drag these two views up so that you have more room to work with. So now as I make changes in the world over here, you can see that once I release a change, it is going to be reflected immediately on the right side. Now this is going to be good because the next thing we're going to do is set up our actual world for use in our dino run. This is going to require deleting two of our cubes and then taking our final cube and then making it the platform and runway that our dinosaur is going to be running on and that the enemies are going to be running down. So to go over some stuff, we can simply use these arrows to reposition our platform. But if we want to resize our platform, you can click on this little scale right here, or that's shortcut R, which changes these from arrows to blocks. Now if I drag, it's going to make our platform bigger. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use our perspective viewport here to make the actual size of the platform that I want, and then I'm going to adjust my camera to make sure that it reflects properly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out here and I'm going to make a really long runway. Let's say that it's about this long and just for a point of reference for those of you following along very closely, the scale is going to be 31 and a half by one by one. So 31 and a half on the Y of the scale. So now with that taken care of, we're going to go and adjust our camera. As we adjust our camera, you're going to see that if I drag my camera all the way back here, nothing happens. Well, that's because we have asked to be in the two dimension perspective. You can keep your camera back here if that's easier for you to manage your assets, but remember what impacts what our camera actually sees? That's right, that's going to be our ortho width. So you can see this is adjusting the preview and our little sideshow at the same time. And I like how this looks. And again, as a reference point, let's just say for simplicity, we're gonna make this 1450 ortho width for the use in our future project here. We might further adjust this, but for now, that's where I'm gonna leave it. In the next section, we're gonna talk about the creation of our character and starting to build out actual mechanics in this game. See you then.